Hello, welcome to our webinar, Learn Why You Might Be One of the 90% of Researchers Using Unsuitable qPCR Reference Genes. Today we have the presentation by myself, Eric Wilson, and Tom Fletcher, who is standing by to field your questions. So please feel free to type in questions at any time, and Tom will be ready with answers at the end of the uh, webinar. Um, for those of you who have questions that we're unable to uh, um, go over live, we will answer them by email afterwards. Just a little bit of um, housekeeping. Um, if you need to increase the size of the display, click on the full screen icon near the top right margin to the left of the welcome window. Then, um, your microphones are muted to ensure uh, uh, clarity of a uh, webinar sound. And if you're using a headset or having audio problems, be sure that your uh, audio is configured. Uh, at the top left of the screen, go to the Meeting uh, tab and select Audio Wizard to follow the on-screen instructions. Thank you. And again, uh, do uh, remember to uh, uh, put in questions at any time, and um, off we go. So today we're going to discuss why you should reuse reference genes. Most of you already know that. Uh, we'll also discuss in more detail the selection of good reference genes. And then finally, how do you evaluate the reference genes that you're going to use? So quantitative PCR is an excellent method for the measurement of, refer of uh, gene expression, but it has some complicating factors. And this is why you're going to be using reference genes. So there's the quality of RNA. Most of you know to uh, run gels or to use a gel on a chip uh, system like the Experion to test the uh, quality of your RNA. Uh, there's the efficiency of the reverse transcription, efficiency of the PCR reaction itself. So you're likely already have done some optimization uh, of the uh, PCR reaction that you're using. Then there's variations in extraction and purification of the sample material. And finally, it just boils down to the amount of RNA per sample. Uh, we need to be able to differentiate actual differences in gene expression from simple variation in starting material. So that's why we would use a reference gene. And that's the usual method, is to normalize the reference gene, or normalize the expression of the target gene to a reference gene that's expressed at a uniform level in all samples in a given experiment. And that's the tricky thing, is to make sure that it is expressed at a uniform level. This is known by various names, either as normalized gene expression, or the delta-delta-CQ analysis method, or the LIVAC method. And the LIVAC method, and I, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing Mr. LIVAC's uh, name correctly, uh, assumes a PCR efficiency of 100%. So an expansion of that is the FAFL method, which also takes into account uh, the different PCR reaction efficiencies. So how do you find a gene that's expressed uniformly? And that's difficult because there are individual differences between organisms. There are differences due to culture conditions and differences due to experimental treatments. And then it's important to remember this. It is never enough to use what other studies have used. Um, and the conditions may be different from the other studies, and we can't always assume that they have um, verified their reference genes. So reference genes should be verified for your specific experimental conditions. Um, and I will repeat that one, because that's one of our take-home messages here. Reference genes should be verified for your specific experimental conditions. So then, where can you find good reference genes? There's commonly used ones that uh, turn up in a lot of literature. 
uh, such as structural genes like beta actin. And then um, beta actin, as we'll see in some of our data in the subsequent slides, is not always perfect. There's a constitutively expressed metabolic genes like GAP-DH, a very commonly used reference gene, which is good in many instances, but not always. And then common RNAs like the 18S ribosomal RNA, which was popular at one time, but it's expressed at such a high level that uh, um, I think it's fallen out of favor to some degree. Um, people like to have reference genes expressed at a similar level to their gene of interest, but that's not always critical. Many genes of interest are going to ex be expressed at such a low level that you simply can't pick a reference gene that's uh, similar in the level of expression. So one good source of reference genes and a good way to test them is the Biorad Prime PCR reference uh, gene plate. It has uh, 14 good candidate reference genes, plus it also has controls on the plate for RNA degradation, presence of genomic DNA, uh, PCR ampli amplification, and uh, the function of reverse transcriptase. In addition, as a template, and substitute some of the reference genes here for other genes that you've picked out yourself, and then make it into a custom plate. Other sources of reference genes. We see here some uh, a screen from uh, the gene uh, ref genes uh, function on the Gene Investigator site, and they have a a free uh, function that allows you to put in genes. Uh, your genes of interest, uh, tissues that you're going to be using them in, and it selects some candidate reference genes for you. Of course, you will need to test those, and that's, that's another one of our um, take-home lessons. You're going to have to test them yourself. So how do you test them, or how do you evaluate them once you've got the data? There, there's a series of different uh, softwares that'll do this for you. And um, the first was uh, one called Genorm by uh, Van de Sample. And it's the basis for the Biorad CFX Manager software that we'll see a screen on in a moment. There is another one called GPR and uh, one called BestKeeper and another called Norm Finder. And all of these will give similar results, and all of them will improve greatly over using a single reference gene with no uh, experimental verification. So here we have some examples of uh, a panel of different reference genes. And uh, the worst ones for the tissue, uh, five different uh, tissues, the worst ones will be at the top, and the best ones will be at the bottom. And we can see here that uh, some of the commonly used reference genes, uh, beta-actin, uh, ACTB in this, uh, in this slide, uh, shown in green, uh, turns out to be a fairly poor reference gene in most of the tissues that we're looking at. Um, GAP-DH uh, turns out to be pretty good in most of them, but not all of them. You'll notice uh, at the bottom, since these reference genes are evaluated, and we'll talk a little more about this in a moment, by a pairwise comparison, we can never get down to having a, a fewer than two uh, good ones. So um, GAP-DH is one of the two good ones in three of the, uh, the five tissues that we're looking at. So how many reference genes should we use? So single reference genes frequently are not enough. Uh, by some estimates that I've seen, about 25% of publications that rely on a single unverified reference gene are off by an average of threefold in expression, which can play havoc with your, with your uh, numbers. Um, typically, we'll get uh, much improved results with uh, an average of multiple genes. So three reference genes is frequently good enough, 
But from our previous slide, we'll see that uh, when we're looking at different tissues, we may need to have more. Um, then in some cases, if we're looking for just a dramatic difference, you can have less reference genes, maybe only one. But by dramatic, I mean something like a hundred to a thousand fold difference. So here is, is how the, the M value, when the, the M is the mean standard deviation of the log two transformed expression ratio of each possible combination of gene X with all other genes in the multiplex. And that will give you the uh, relative stability value M. And we're also looking at just the, uh, the variation here, so the uh, coefficient of variance, CV. So both numbers should be as low as possible. Uh, typically, we would like to see the CV at 0.25 or less for homogeneous uh, samples, and the M value at 0.5 or less. Um, that's somewhat relaxed with heterogeneous samples. Uh, CV of 0.5 or less is acceptable, and an M value of 1 or less. Is, is potentially good enough. Here we see an example uh, using the CFX Manager software of the process of selecting a, a reference gene. We started out with a panel of six different reference genes. We uh, evaluate the coefficient of variance for each and the M value for each. And the first panel in the upper left, um, we'll see here that the M values for all of them are pretty bad. But remember that if you have one that's not so good, the pairwise comparison will apply to both the bad one and the other one. And so if we knock out the worst one, in this case it's a PLCE1, so phospholipase C epsilon 1, uh, turned out to be a pretty poor reference gene. We knock it out and get to the uh, five remaining in the middle um, uh, panel. And we can see that that improved the M value and the CV uh, significantly. We're, we're already pretty good here. But we can repeat the process, knock out PGGT1B. And we can see our M value uh, drop down to about uh, 0.36. And, um, and looking at even that one, we can see that TBP is not as good as the others. We'd probably knock that one out as well and perhaps go with the uh, the remaining three. So if you have a novel system um, or you're doing something that other people haven't done before, you may have to um, look for some novel reference genes. So here we have, and you can see the M values is best on the left, going over to worst on the right for four different tissues, um, not necessarily commonly used, some uh, Arabidopsis tissues and mouse liver. Uh, in pink are some of the commonly used reference genes. And then there are some novel reference genes in blue on the left. Uh, I think they were, they were picked out of the uh, uh, gene investigator uh, 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 software. And um, so the take home message for us. So the reference genes allow us to control for the amount of starting material that we have. Uh, appropriate reference genes may vary from system to system. Uh, commonly used reference genes are not always good. And we saw some that uh, beta actin didn't always turn out to be as good as one would hope. Multiple reference genes are usually required. And then um, we're going to use the mean of the selected reference genes to normalize expression data at the end. So thank you for listening.